Hello and welcome to the fifth lecture of Python concepts for loop. Uh, just a flashback of the previous lecture. We have uh, learned about lists and indexing, and we have learned how to use indexing to modify, delete, add, or subtract any element from a list and how to work on a list. So after that, we can actually do more by using for loop. Many a times you have an array or a collection of numbers or characters or strings, and you want to do the same operation on every element. Instead of doing that manually, you can use the utility of for loop, meaning that you can use a loop, you can define a loop, and you can go through every element or a particular set of elements in your database. And then you can do a particular operation on each element. So that uh, that's what is actually done with for loop. Let's start with an initial, a very preliminary level of uh, example. For example, I have a database of salaries in my institution. For example, there are three uh, employees whose salaries are 100, 200, and $1,000. So let's say in the new year, I like to see what happens if I double uh, each of their salaries. So I run a for loop, let's say for salary in my database, when I define that for loop, it will actually go through with each salary. Uh, it will go through each salary. And then I will print salary times two. So I will double this variable by number two. And then after I print that, you can see that the salary is doubled. 100 becomes 200. And then it goes to the next element. 200 becomes 400. And then it goes to the next element, 1000. And it becomes 2000. So uh, just a uh, disclaimer, this salary is actually arbitrary variable. It can be anything you want. For example, you can uh, make it I. So you have to change it here also, and it remains the same. So let's come to the second example. Uh, what can we do other, uh, what other things we can do with for loops. Let's say we have three students in our class, student A, student B, and student C. So I will run a for loop through each student's name and send a greeting card in new year. So I will run a for loop for student in students, and I will print happy new year. I will, uh, I will use string concatenation. And as these are characters, there will be no uh, errors. So I will use happy new year and then plus and then student. So it will go, uh, it will use this variable and it will go through each element of this student's list. So at first it will use the first name of the student here. So it will print happy new year A and then it will go to, uh, go to the second student's name, student B, it will print happy new year the second student name, student B, and then it will print the same for the third, third student. It will go on and on until it reaches the end of the list. And we can also introduce the concept of range here. Range means uh, you can run a for loop or you can run a conditional for a range. When you, when you run a loop through a range one to 10, one thing you have to consider that in Python, the lower limit is included, but the upper limit is not. So it will start at one, but the upper limit, uh, it will not go to 10, it will stop at nine, just the previous element. So when you print the range of numbers from one to 10, it will print from one to nine. If you print from one to five, it will print one to four. And also one thing you have to uh, consider that uh, Python is indentation sensitive. So after a for loop, after this colon, you can see that this next, no, the next line is kind of indented. So uh, if you do not use this indentation, you will, uh, you will get an error. So always make sure that you are using the proper indentation. In Jupyter Notebook, it automatically says the indentation. So you don't have to worry about that. And uh, this is also uh, kind of helpful because 
uh, you can know that this line is under uh, under the block of the for loop. And also you can use uh, the range uh, utility inside a list. For example, you want to make a list of numbers from one to four. So you can make a range of one to five, and then you can make a list of them. Up, and if you now print the numbers, you can see that there is a list containing one, two, three, and four. If you make it one to 11, you can see one through 10. Now let's say what we can do inside a for loop. Let's say you have, uh, you have nine employees whose salaries are one through nine. And now in the new year, you want to double their salaries. So what you can do is that you can run a for loop for salary in range one to 10. And then you can set, uh, you can define a new variable, new salary is equal to salary times two. So each of the salary in this range will be doubled. And then what you can do is that in this empty new salary database, you can use the append utility to um, deposit the new salary values. So you can see that after you print the new salary database, you can see that all the numbers in the range has been doubled. So without doing manually doubling all the salaries, you can actually go through this range and you can double all the values and you can actually collect those values in a newly defined database. And also here is another uh, small uh, example, like how you can use the indexing uh, indexing to show, let's say you, you want to see just the first two elements. So you can actually use the indexing for, let's say in the new salary database, you want to see only the first two elements. So you can use the indexing zero to two, uh, just to mention that the upper bound is not included. So you will see the index zero and index one. That means the first and second element of your new salary database. So if you print it, then you can see only two and four. Just to mention that uh, from zero, if you start from the beginning, uh, if you start from the indexing zero, you don't have to mention zero. You can just uh, write here colon, um, colon two. So it will understand that you are starting from the beginning and you will go to the second uh, index and it will print the same. If you want to print the first four four elements, then you can write from the beginning to five. Then you can see that index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four. So you can print up, up until index four. So you have to write here uh, from the beginning to index five, uh, from the beginning to five. And you can also do these things uh, in case of characters. Uh, let's say you have a collection of players a b c d and e and you want to send the best players to your um, uh, you just want to show your best players uh, so that they can play the others will be excluded so you can run a for loop through these players and you can only select an indent uh, select an indexing for the begin from the beginning to two that means you are selecting from index zero and one and excluding the upper bound two. So it will print just the first A and B players. Let's say you, are, you have selected just these first two players here. You can also do uh, one, two, three. So that means that you will start from one, index one, and you will go up until index two. That means it will go to this index zero, this is index one and index two. So it will print B and C here. Let's see if it works. Yes, it shows B and C. So that's how you can select a particular portion of a list by using indexing in the for loop. Another, the last thing uh, here is the concept of tuples. Uh, you can see that the elements, the values of a list can easily be manipulative they can be changed but sometimes uh, you can uh, you want uh, the facility that the values cannot be changed 
So that's how uh, the concepts of tuple uh, occurs. In tuples, you define them by parentheses instead of uh, this third bracket. If you define a list with this first bracket, their values cannot be changed. And this collection of numbers or characters will be called a tuple. So if you print a tuple, you can see that uh, this will not be shown as a list, but as a tuple, you can uh, recognize them by the first bracket. And let's see what happens if I want to redefine any particular element in a tuple. Let's say I want to change the first index, that is the first element two, and we I want to assign the value of 100. And if I run this, it will show an error. And it shows a tuple object does not support item assignment. If you want to change the value, you have to define the entire tuple. So that's one of the facilities that you want to use uh, time and time. So that's what I had to share about the uh, for loop. Uh, which facilitates doing a lot of works and uh, you can reduce uh, tons of workload by uh, efficiently using for loop. So the next lecture will be on if statement and conditionals. See you there.